Yeah, so today I'm going to be etching the line into the acrylic photograph that I took when I was at Cleveland Zoo and I'll just show you now I'm going to edit it and the outcome and stuff, speeds and settings my sound so I'm going to have to narrate this as I go but I'm just going to go through this this is how I edit the image in Photoshop to get it to the point you know where I was etching it so just to start off what I was just explaining there is if you just click select image it don't do a very good job it kind of don't cut out the hair properly or nothing like that so what you're better off to do is make a solid colour layer go with a colour like red or something duplicate the original and put it above turn off the background and then make sure you clicked on the top one and go to select uh, um, select a mask make sure you got onion skin switched on at the top there and then you can try the two different modes on the side there mine is on object and then if you mess with the sliders down the bottom now this is in the select a mask panel you'll see it starts to bring back the hairs I'm just showing there where it's bringing them back and but now it's cut out <coughs> pretty well which I'm happy with that so I'll say okay then the next thing I did was Uh, cut it out so control and C and control and V so now it's cut out with no background and make sure you just turn off that other layer you can see it done a pretty good job it does leave a little bit in there but I mean you can get away with that little bit so and then what I did was went to filter and camera raw filter and just brought the settings up a little bit more made it just a little bit brighter and a little bit more contrasty see there just by moving the shadows the highlights down a little bit the contrast up you just want it kind of a nice even image with decent contrast between the areas you can see there most of the hairs and we've got little black spots in between so that's good Then I'm going to go image mode and change it to black and white. And from there you can mess with the colours, the different colours, you know, would bring out different. So you can just slide them back and forward and see what works best really, what kind of how you like it. I like it a bit more on the brighter side myself, so it's not too much getting etched, but... can see there like you know to bring out the details you just got to mess with the right slider and yep that's done and then you could end it there but I did like I normally do duplicate it twice the top one invert it now first you want to change it to vivid color and then go to filter blur Gaussian blur and then just mess with that slider a little bit you don't want it crazy you just want to kind of see a little outline you can see there like i'll keep it low try it at some different ones and you'll see the difference and then you just control and click the layer below press control and g so they group and change it to overlay and then now just show the difference between not that one but this so that's without it that's with it, you can see it brings back a lot of detail that grey that's around the edge you can get rid of that if you uh, press control and click on the on layer 1 on your cut out image it'll give you a cut your cut out line then you could just go back to that layer and delete but I'm leaving it like that because it'll give the edge a bit of a deeper line and stand out better so 
I just deleted the other ones, so I don't need them now, they was just switched off anyway, so. And then I'm just going to save it as a PNG. Alright, so now with the PNG in image R, just let that load. Yeah, once that's loaded, just go to the resize. I was just explaining there that you could see the grey around the edges. Um, yeah, go to resize. Change it two inches and make it the size you want. I did end up just doing a closer in one and I've done it at 220 lines per inch instead of 260 what I wrote there. I actually I did explain in the video outside but I actually ended up with 220 dots per inch and the image was a little bit smaller. But And then I just material CO2 for a bit. Yep, that loaded, and you can see it's already inverted it and mirrored it. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit just to check it. I probably should have gone to the material preview down the bottom as well, but I thought it looked good there, so I just downloaded it as a PNG. I just got this out. I downloaded it as a PNG. And then in Lightburn I just click the file up the top there and select that one. Which I ended up with one that was a bit closer in than that, but it was exactly the same edited. It was just I cropped it a bit closer so I had more detailed head. But other than that everything was the same. So I'll start from outside on that computer. Okay, I've got it outside on the computer now. All I did was, I changed it, instead of using the full line picture, I just changed it for the head, to hopefully get a bit more detail on the head. Um, I'm going to send it 350 speed and a 10 power, and take the paper off before I send it. And for the mode, I did, when I re-put this image into image R, I changed it to 225 dots per inch and then before I click pass through I changed it here to 225 and then just click pass through so I don't know if that is necessary because it gets greyed out I think it just copies whatever's here but whatever just in case okay the acrylics in there and it's all framed up ready to go I'm gonna then that 350 speed 10 power I took the paper off both sides just so you can see better what's going on hopefully in the time lapse but yeah we're going to the time lapse now okay that just finished before getting it out, I'm gonna because it ain't got the paper on. I'm gonna just give it a quick wipe over in there. So I'm just using a bit of this stuff on a cloth, and I'm just gonna give it a little wipe. Flip it because it's reversed. Yeah, and that was 350 speed and a 10 power with. Things like this, acrylic and even glass. Like if you're doing some testing, just try some lower powers as well because for me, the lower power and a bit slower speed always works. I know if you're trying to, you know, do it as a business, you've got to run it as fast, you know, you've got to make as much money as possible, but slow with a low power normally seems to work for me. And it don't actually take much longer because sometimes if you're running it 500 speed instead of your laser head ending here and going back it's going past so you're wasting that bit of time 
as it's going past. So really, I think once you go over about 350 speed, don't hold me to that, but I believe once you, I noticed even then at 350 I was coming past, so maybe it's even a bit slower, about 300 speed, and then it will, you know, only go to at the edge of the etching. It might even be a little bit slower than that, like a 250 speed. But yeah, pleased how that came out. I'll get some photos of it and put it up on the internet. One other thing as well, running at that low speed. Hopefully that's in focus, but you can see that's my tip after doing that. That took about 25, 24 minutes I think, so. But you can see the tip even stays pretty clean really, because it's not blasting off a load of extra stuff. So yeah, I just wanted to show that. Very soon I'll be doing a video on cleaning my honeycomb. <laughs> just as soon as the snow has gone outside. Yeah, so once the weather gets a bit better, I'll uh, <laughs> clean the honeycomb. I was just taking a look at this. Yeah, it looks pretty cool actually, with a darker background. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe. And I'll come up with some more videos as soon as possible.